Hey everybody, it's uh, Fist25, and we are here today at Magda, and uh, uh, spawning in slow- Whoa! Behind me is HDMS Pearlman, and I- yeah, this wasn't here when I actually landed, and uh, I hope my ship isn't in anything, so- uh, yeah, you can see this is the hull A behind me, and we're going to take a... Actually, I'm going to get the ship landed on that pad, and we're going to take a first look at the MISC hull A. Yeah, oh, jeez. Yeah, be right back. Okay, so now that we're actually on the pad... Uh, oh, there's someone else here, too. There's a, a cutlass behind me. That guy just streamed in as well. So this is... And there he goes. Uh, this has been a very interesting PTU, to say the least. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's take a look at this beauty of a ship behind me. Uh, the Misk Hull A. And uh, let me get some history up on it. The uh, MISC Hull A is a, a small, efficient cargo hauler and is the smallest of the Hull series, featuring a retracting external cargo spindle and powerful engines. The ship has the largest cargo capacity in its size class. Care should be taken in dangerous systems without an escort, as the Hull A lacks significant offensive or defensive capabilities. Additionally, the Hull A and B are often used as surface-to-orbit ferries, which makes sense because of how small it is. So, with that being said, let, let's let's take a look at the Hull A. Um, from the exterior, at least. It's a little windy here at Magda, so from the... Uh, let's go to the front here. So the front is very, very misc, right? It actually has quite a large viewport um, compared to like the Freelancer. You notice there's a piece on the bottom and there's some pieces on the top that you can actually see out of, which is pretty, pretty cool, pretty intuitive. Uh, you can see I have replaced the stock distortion uh, guns in the front with a couple of 117s. And uh, here you can see, the, I guess, the front intakes. Or, or Actually, those are probably the retro thrusters on the front. I've been trying to call the ship for six days, and I finally got what was able to do it today. I'm on an Australian server, and I had to start in Lowerville. It's been, it's been pretty pretty crazy. I actually ran into, a, ran into Eradicator earlier today. trying to. He was trying to get off our corp as well as I was, but we didn't have any elevators so coming around the starboard side we can see what appears to be maybe some kind of docking hatch but it's not the entrance to the ship the entrance is on the port side um, looks like a couple of fins here like some uh leading edge extinction type things might, might help with lift i'm not sure up in front of me is the cargo spindle mechanism thing um which we're gonna go play with here in just a minute uh, it's very misky. I, I do, I do like that chrome color scheme of, of misc ships. Uh, look, it looks like a really sweet gas turbine engine in the back here. Uh, I like it a lot. And then these, these bottom two nacelles also are, are part of the engine, and they exhaust as well. Um, it looks like there's some kind of connections. Uh, maybe it's power or gas or, or heat or exhaust or something like that from the top to the bottom nacelles. Uh, I actually really like that design look. I'm just not sure how functional they are. And uh, yeah, coming around the port side, we see some keep clear escape point. So that's where your bed is. So it looks like your bed is going to be your ejection point. Then here's the door. And then there we go. We can see that it is a little weird when it comes to the landing gear. There are four landing gear, uh, kind of two in the middle and one in the front, one in the back. It looks a little weird when it lands. It almost looks like it's going to fall over. So keep that in mind. Let's go to first person view. And uh, so you can see there's two buttons here, one up there, one up here. This one, I believe I've only gotten it to just open the ladder. 
This one down here gives me internship and open ladders, so I'm not sure why that's redundant. But we can see that, that opens up, ladder comes down, very much prospector-like. Okay, so now we're in the ship and that airlock door closes. We do have modern panels up here, uh, the open and the lock and all that stuff. We have a non-interactable component access, and I'm going to call this the foyer because <laughs> there's the cockpit up there. Um, so can we, do these buttons work? Oh, they do work. So it is a little bit interactable. So, okay, so we can see Chimera communications, our avionics and uh, looks like gravity generator, life support, stuff like that. Over here on this side, more component access. Looks like we have maybe uh, shields, um, bottom drive, power plant, something like that. Okay, so to the on the starboard side here is says suit locker. We can can we click that? Does it do anything? It doesn't look like it actually does anything. It says suit clamp. So I'm not a hundred. Oh, oh, it does open. Okay, just have to get real close. I'm not quite sure what this does. Uh, uh, closed door. Definitely maybe a way to keep prisoners in here. Uh, suit clamp. I, maybe I'm just not the best person with a hull A and I, I don't know the complete history of it. Uh, I can tell you this, the hull A has a crew of one. It's a small size ship. Um, it is a whole, uh, obviously with the whole series, it has 64 SCU and uh, it's I guess its competitor is kind of the Freelancer, but this is just a cargo ship. The Freelancer can do other stuff, but you can see there's room in here for box missions. 100% you can drop boxes in there. Uh, I, don't, I have no idea what this is for. Um, and maybe somebody in the comments can tell me what this thing is for, because I, I don't know why there would be suit locker. Okay, let's head back to Habitation. Open. So I actually like this, and I like this a lot. Um, first off, you have a weapons locker. Uh, that is pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure why the whole series needs a weapons locker. <laughs> I don't think you're going to be doing a whole lot of hot drops in here, but it, it has it. Okay. Um, over here is some storage. And if you click it, you just basically go into the inventory system. Uh, over here is, I have no idea, probably some kind of a food processor drink thingamajig over here it looks like we have almost a full galley we have a food dispenser and some kind of a drain um looks like room for a chair type thing but nothing is going to pop out we do have a like a mini fridge here so we can keep our beverages cold we have some i, I guess those are cookie crackers uh we have some soy sauce some ketchup some mustard and things like that. Uh, cutting board and a really sharp knife, which I'm not sure how that stays on when you're flying around. Uh, and an access panel that we can't interact with, but so far so good. Of course, the bed over here. Uh, in the bed, uh, auxiliary and alarm. I'm not sure. Oh, lighting. Okay, okay. So lights. Ooh, lights off. Lights on. And then alarm. Oh, it's like code red. So, I don't know. It's kind of weird to have that on a single player ship, but I guess if it's iteration one, that is pretty cool. You do have a screen to look at when you're in bed. Can I, I don't know if I can turn the alarm lights off. Looks like I can't. Let's see if we can actually just turn the lights off and then back on. Hey, that worked. Okay. And then, of course, in the back, we do have a, oh, a little bit of a freezer. We do have a restroom. Um, our sink over here and uh, a medicine cabinet. How about that? We got some, some shaving cream and some, some, some stuff like that. A towel. We have our, our, we actually have a full shoreland in here. Okay. 
Uh, the shower, uh, open. All right, we got the toilet, the toilet paper that came out. And we have a close. That's pretty cool. At least that works. That works. I, I don't think they're the top of the bottom buttons necessary. What's, what's that do? That is the toilet. Okay. I thought the bottom button might have been the toilet, but maybe they both are. But okay, full toilet. Uh, and there you go. Pretty simple, pretty basic in here. One man ship, right? Uh, here's the airlock. Okay, that's not really an airlock. I'm not sure why this labeled airlock. This is more of a, a foyer. <laughs> Let's go check out the cockpit here. In the cockpit, uh, you know, very freelancer, very uh, industrial type of look around here. Uh, as you can see, pretty good view screen uh, area down there. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into the seat. There we go. Spinning around. We got that uh, classic misc yoke in front of us. Uh, but again, we do have decent glass around here. Uh, it looks similar to a freelancer right here, but it actually looks pretty darn good. Uh, looks looks actually really good. So, um, we got okay. Let's look at like displays and stuff like that. We have at least one, two, three, four multifunction displays. Those up here, because they're kind of far away. Uh, it's kind of strange, to be honest with you. And the mouse moves really crazy for me up here in this ship in particular. That might be just the settings I have in the PTU. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, over here, we have extend cargo spindle, which we'll get into that in a second. Spool quantum drive. So there are some buttons here. Cruise control. Proximity flight assist, a couple flights. Uh, looks like landing gear, ESP, uh, exit. Uh, none of those work. Screen one, screen two, nothing on the yoke itself. Uh, displays for quantum and navigation, none of those buttons work. Do any of these work? Engine on, engine off. Our engine is off right now. And our shield displays. It looks like for some reason this ship has four shields, which it should only have one because it is a small ship. It should just have a bubble shield. So that might be a bug with uh, this ship in, in this uh, PTU. Okay, well, it looks like that's actually about it for that. So let's let's position our outside camera here. Um, I want to see the extinction of the cradle. Or, I'm sorry, the spindle. So we click that. We can see it just kind of spins back there. And that is pretty cool. There we go. So that is where our cargo will fit on this ship. So let's go ahead and I'm going to exit the ship and I'm going to go run inside and grab some cargo. See what happens. Uh, maybe those things will fill up with a cargo box. I'm, I'm not sure. Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, let's come back as I'm running back to the ship. See you guys in just a second. So cutting in real quick, you can see I am filling up with uh, 64 SCU of diamonds right here. And got it. Okay, let's run back to the ship. Oh, that's so weird. Okay. Um... Depressurizing airlock. Ooh, it says uninitialized over there. Whoa. This patch is so wonky. Um, I don't see cargo boxes up there. Maybe they're invisible. I, 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 I wouldn't expect stuff. Oh, no, there is cargo up there. Or is that just the spindle? That's really odd. Yeah. 
It looks like stuff got filled up here because these are definitely diamonds, crystalline minerals. Um, so that's kind of how that works, at least for these type of SCU boxes. Um, that is wicked. But I believe in the future there's just going to be like 32 SCU containers or something like that. When Once we have uh, physicalized cargo slash cargo refactor slash whatever. Fuel intake. How about that? I'm cool, though. I, I think that's pretty neat. How the cargo fills up on the spindle and how the ship uh, kind of does that. So let's uh, let's go ahead and enter the ship. Now, I have no idea what's actually like here in the game, because there's a lot of assets that aren't spawned in. But for right now, let's uh, let's hop in the pilot seat. There we go. Let's fire up our engines. And so you can see we have fire coming from the main engine and then those two nacelles from the bottom. And here's our view of the ship from, from here. We're going to hit K to turn on our VTOL. Uh, just hoping it'll get us up a little quicker. And there we go. Let's see where those thrusters are at. So you see there's definitely some in the back there. It looks like there's definitely some in the front as well. Okay, so we are up. Oh, let's uh, retract our landing gear. So you guys can get that animation. Pretty neat. They stow away really nice. And let's go back to default view. Okay, Miss Freelancer, let's uh, let's cruise a little bit through Magda. So we're just at SCM right now. The ship actually handles fairly decently. I mean, it's a small ship, right? So uh, 64 SCU of exterior cargo on this ship. Uh, pretty neat. Let's see if we maybe we'll do the thumbnail right there. Spawning in stuff has just been really, really odd um, in this PTU. So, picks up a little bit. Okay, so it, it, it does seem to fly real nice. And uh, let's give it some more speed. Uh, let's give it a little afterburner, see what that looks like. There we go. One thing I have noticed about the ship is, and it might be a bug, is that the afterburner... Oh, notice when I go to thrusters how much less thruster is from the main engine. Probably because I have VTOL turned on. That was pretty cool. Um, when I do hit AB, it... it bleeds out really slowly so if i hit it and this may just be the ship but look how slow the boost is going i mean i've been holding it down for quite a few seconds now and uh, you know if you if you ever if you own a prospector you know the boost goes away real fast but i'm not even to half yet and we're we're cruising along in magda's environment here so pretty pretty darn neat let's let's head up into the atmosphere or out of the atmosphere and Head up into space. Pretty easy going for this ship heading out. What do you guys think? You can definitely see uh, the the shading on the, the the skin better like this. And it still moves really, really well. Really well. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly impressed with this ship. I, I don't actually have a need for it in my fleet because I have I like a constellation. I have other things that I, I just don't need the small of a cargo ship. But it is a pretty darn cool ship. Um. And, you know, I like I like all the new shiny toys and stuff, too. So. Sorry, just taking a bunch of screenshots here. 
Okay. Should we do a, a combat mission with a full cargo load? You can see I do have, uh, let's see, I have 54 uh, shots with these two bulldogs. Um, they are gimbaled because they're on a chin turret. So they do move around. Um, that's not bad for a small ship. Uh, let's go maximum weapons. We have 65 shots with a maximum weapons. So that's actually pretty nice as well. So before we head out to this monitors mission, I do want to check top speed of this ship uh, for you guys. Um, it is very slow to accelerate and decelerate. Um, something I have noticed. It looks like top speed is pretty much 999 or maybe a thousand um, meters a second. And we will enter quantum and check the SCM speed. Looks like quantum's actually working in this patch, which is a good thing. There was nothing worse than uh, the quantum stuff freezing up. Does it look like you were standing still? I did upgrade the quantum drive on this to a little bit better. It, it doesn't come with a great quantum drive. So. All right, it is complete. Looks like our SCM speed on this ship is 107, maybe 108. So there's our speeds. Okay. Let's uh, let's see what's going on. I am supposed to go to the satellite. I have no idea if any of this stuff has spawned in. Um, so that may negate our ability to actually do any type of mission. You know, who knows? Uh, I know they're working on streaming stuff and that's commendable. Whoa, what was that? That was pretty crazy sounding. It was like, whoa. Is that my scanner? I don't know what's doing that. It looks like scanning isn't actually picking anything up. And the satellite hasn't spawned in either. Yep. So unfortunately, guys, just because of the state of this patch, we are really not going to be able to test this kind of stuff out. But I'm sure we will, you know, be doing it on a stream or something once everything gets a little smoothed out, uh, things get better. And we'll go from there. So for right now, uh, let's deliver this cargo. Let's uh, let's see how this guy does on. I guess uh, a trip into Hurston. Okay. Hurston. Hurston was the only place I could actually do anything from. So. And then there's these like real crazy stops. Like the game will just stop. It's really odd. I'm going to go ahead and abandon that mission. I know a lot of this content is coming to you raw. Um, and, you know, that's the way I do my videos. Um, there is actually quite a bit of editing behind this stuff, but uh, a lot of it I like to do because I want to show you the experience of being in the cockpit, what it's really like to fly the ship, um, my reactions to things like that. And that's just the kind of stuff I like to do. There we go. So I, I just stole an EOS, I believe, quantum drive. Um, <laughs> there is no commercial for this ship yet. Um, and we are going to go over a loadout real quick. And then uh, after we land here. And then we will, we will, you know, you know, I kind of want to retract the spindle just to see what's going to happen, but I don't even know if it'll let me. 
Ooh, that is super, super, super loud. Ooh, I don't ever remember Quantum being quite that loud. And of course, we're on the dark side of Lorville, so we're actually not going to see any clouds, which is kind of odd, but, you know, it is what it is. Whoa, that's really loud. That's like blowing up my ears. I'm sorry if that, well, hopefully the video will just kind of filter that out, but uh, that got real loud real quick. There are definitely some issues. Maybe sound streaming is weird. I do have some rain here coming in. I know you guys want to see it, don't you? You want to see me try to drop this cargo. Because there it is coming in. That's a cool screenshot. That's a cool screenshot, too. <laughs> I just got to take a million of these. It's a new ship. I like the new ships. OK, let's let's see what happens when we try to retract our spindle. Disengage cruise. Oh, it doesn't even give us the option. See this? It's kind of grayed out. So, oh, darn it. So that's what I was going to try to do. But I guess we don't have that availability. The ship, for me, it flies the same having this load of cargo on there as it did when it didn't have a load of cargo on there. And I don't know what. There we go. Oh, I didn't contact anybody. Let's see if my ATC request works. Then we'll also turn on the lights. Can we see where the lights are? Yep, the lights are kind of on the bottom of the ship. Turn that off. OK, so you can definitely see the lights on the ship. It feels like we were going too fast. Did you actually give me a landing area? Because I don't see one. This is going to be weird. I see a 100 eye. Yeah, I don't have a marker to actually land and maybe that marker even needs to spawn in. And it's just part of the whole streaming process. It just isn't going to work. I'm not quite sure. It would be cool to know, though. <laughs> and of course, it's Hurston, so it's extremely, extremely dark. Um, I could turn on my MBG here. If, if anybody's wondering how I did that, I used Reshade. And if you want to know about Reshade, I have a couple videos on it. And you must use Reshade version 5.0.2 in this patch. And this is that version working just fine. But I did wish I had a hanger marker. Maybe that's my hanger up here. What do you guys think? One of these guys looks like this one is open. So this might be my hanger. This thing is flying real crazy because, well, it's Hurston. And what else would you expect from Hurston? This is exactly what I would expect from Hurston. OK. We're going to try to nose in, see what happens here. That was a horrible landing. But I think this is our hangar. Oh, no. Obstructed. Uh, maybe this wasn't our hangar, guys. <laughs> it doesn't matter. 
we're going to exit the ship anyway. So I'm okay with them impounding the vehicle. We didn't have a landing marker. It is what it is. I just don't want to go with the ship. You see, it does take a hot minute to get off of the ship. I'm trying to, bro. I'm trying to. Okay, let's take a last look at the Miss Cole A before it disappears from being abandoned. Yeah. The doors did close. So it's almost like I did land in the right hangar. Oh, there goes the ship. Okay. So let's go over there and let's check out the loadout uh, on the ship. Uh, and then we'll we'll end the video. All right, guys, uh, Fisty Five back here. We are looking at the DPS calculator at uh, Urkel.games. This is the PTU calculator. So a lot of this, you know, hey, it's subject to change. It's a first look. Nothing's uh, set in stone here. But we're looking at the whole A. Um, let's look at the stats here. So light freight, uh, transporter career, size one, crew one, 64 SEO cargo, which we did see in the video uh looks like for hp it's got 107,000, which is a lot of hp uh so maybe the whole series does have some some pretty cool armor plating um it is a scm speed of 108 and a max afterburner speed of a thousand just like we we, sh we showed in the game uh stats for picture yeah and roll not great uh <laughs> Uh, not even like starter ship level, but uh, what do you expect? It's a, it's a cargo hauler. It's not made to be maneuverable. It's not made to be a fighter. It's made to move cargo and things from uh, around small distances, right? Uh, hydrogen capacity, 164,000 and quantum fuel capacity, it says 10,000. And I did quantum around a little bit and it barely use any quantum so i'm not sure if that's correct or if that's a feature or um uh, if that's just a bug um I, th I think i you know most size one ships have a quantum fuel of 583 liters this is 10,000. so urkel does pull stuff right out of the game files so this may be correct but it may be a bug let's look at what it has for weapons um, it does come with a, a gimbal nose turret uh, that is bespoke. You can't change that. It comes with two uh, XJ-1 ballistic repeaters. Um, are those ballistic? I thought those were... Uh, I thought those were distortion. I believe those are distortion. <laughs> so I think there's some... Yeah, I believe XJ-1s are distortion. I think Urkel has uh, not put that category in because there's tachyon cannons now so um 75 dps tachyon cannons okay so i would still put the cf-117 bulldogs on there because of the pricing and uh the laser repeaters are still all the same dps um and the bulldogs are the cheapest so 378 dps in a sustained firing uh in a burst 672 um <coughs> let's look at missiles oh there's no missiles <laughs> it's because of the roll of the ship for uh the shields there are industrial grade c bulwarks um i don't think they're the worst they're not the worst they're not the stewards but they are the grade c so they're third third worst yeah uh with the best ones being the palisades uh <laughs> it is up to you what you want to do with that stuff but um if you think you're going to be getting into some combat upgrade you know maybe go with the fr66s or uh, or even what my recommendation would be go to the 7sa concords because they're cheaper um you shouldn't be trying to get in fights here but if you think you're going to be in hostile territory you might need a little more shields maybe go with the uh the civilian concords uh, because you shouldn't be in a sustained battle Maybe a little bit more shield HP will let you get away. <laughs> With that, we can see that the power plant is just a little bit taxed over half a uh, civilian grade B power plant. So actually a really good power plant. Um, I think it's probably fine to leave it stock. Um, 
I don't really see a need or a reason to change it. There's still plenty of power left over. Um, but if you wanted to, I would go with a JS300, um, which knocks it down way below half uh, to about a third. Um, or you could go with one of the industrial plants, which gets you a lot of power. Uh, they are typically a little bit more expensive, though. Um, so we'll, we'll just stick with the JS300. Actually, you know what? The Ion Burst is the second best civilian. The White Rose keeps you at half. Yeah, I'm, I would go with JS300. Uh, the coolers, they are Arctic Storm civilian grade Cs. We can see our cooling. We're using 75 out of 400. I don't see a need to upgrade it. Uh, if you wanted to upgrade it, I'd probably go with Ultra Flows. Those are like my tried and true uh, guys. But um, I don't see a reason to upgrade the coolers. I just leave them stock. Uh, I would upgrade the Quantum Drive always. The Industrial Grade C Goliath is very slow. Uh, it'll take you uh, 12 minutes to go from Microtech to Arcorp, the longest distance in the game, and that's just not good. Um, I would go with a civilian drive, either an Atlas or what I still recommend, the Voyage, uh, which is pretty darn quick. Eight minutes for Microtech to Arcorp in the Voyage. And then um, I don't know if there's going to be any paints. There might be some in the future. Um, or pro There's probably going to be paints when it gets released. Um, so there you go, guys. The uh, the Misk Hull A. This is uh, the loadout. Let's uh, put non-stock items to cart. We'll check the cart. Um, try to put stuff where we can buy it all at once. Area 18. Oh, geez. Her L2. Is this a her L2? Nope. Yeah, you're going to be going a little bit <laughs> around to go get this stuff. Unfortunately. Um, uh, the, yeah. So the, the, the Arctic Storm. Oh, we don't need Arctic Storms because those are stock. So, Area 18 and Bikini Point, real close together to get uh, weapons, uh, quantum drive, shields. And then for the power plant, you can go to Her L2, which is actually pretty close. To, it's near Hurston, so it's not that far from our corp. Um, but if you wanted to go out to Grim Hex or, or Orison, you could go there as well. The, the cost to fully upgrade 66,890 Alpha UVC. Not too bad. There we go. There's the loadout on the Mescal A. We're going to switch over to the outro now. Thanks for watching so far. Hey, guys. So what did you think about the Misk Hull A? Um, were you impressed with it? Do you do? You, I mean, do you? Is it worth the price when and, and we don't know what the price is quite yet, uh, but we should know pretty soon. Oh, you know what? I think we do know the price uh, in real life. It should be, let me see, we don't know the in-game price yet, but uh, standalone, the ship is $80 uh, US, and it looks like there are time-limited sales, but with every new ship in the game, it looks, you know, the, the game, uh, the, the CIG lets you buy the ship. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I appreciate you watching the video. I hope you enjoyed the first look at the Misk Hull A. Um, remember, if you're interested in joining the Discord and adventuring with Jawa and myself, we stream every Thursday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Jawa streams Java with Jawa on Sunday at 9 a.m. Um, but come by the Discord, drop in, say hello. There's plenty of people that are looking for groups to play with. Um, and who knows? Maybe we'll see you in game, have you on stream, uh, whatever. Uh, look forward to that, and the, all the links are in the description below, or you can find us at fistingjawa.org. Thanks for watching, and as always, if the fist don't get you, the lightning bolt will. Good night, Stan.